Seventh grade, unit one, lesson six, scaling and area. Number one, on the grid, draw a scaled copy of polygon Q using a scale factor of two. Compare the perimeter and the area of the new polygon to those of Q. Here's a closer look at polygon Q. First, let's determine the perimeter. We can do this by following along the polygon's boundary line or perimeter and counting the number of units. As you can see here, polygon Q has a perimeter of 20 units. Since they're asking us to draw a scaled copy of polygon Q using a scale factor of 2, polygon Q's perimeter would be multiplied by 2, or the polygon's perimeter would be twice the size. Not only is the perimeter twice the size, but each line segment around the polygon is twice the size. Now let's compare areas. Let's take a look at the area of polygon Q. You can see I've added some red lines to make this shape into a rectangle. This rectangle has the dimensions of seven by three, seven unit base and a three unit height. To find the area of this rectangle, I need to multiply the base times the height, or seven times three. The area of this rectangle is 21 square units. Now I have to subtract the area in red that I added when I turned it into a rectangle. After subtracting that, I'll have the area of the polygon. Since the area in red is a total of five square units, I need to subtract that from 21, which is the area of the rectangle. And 21 minus five is 16. The area of polygon Q is 16 square units. I'm going to apply this same technique on the scaled copy that I drew. The scaled copy has a base of 14 and a height of six. The area will be the base times the height, and 14 times 6 is 84. Next, we need to subtract the area in red so that we can find the area of the scaled copy of polygon Q. The area of the red regions totals 20 square units, and 84 square units minus 20 square units equals 64 square units. The area of the scaled copy of polygon Q is 64 square units. Number two, a right triangle has an area of 36 square units. If you draw scaled copies of this triangle using the scale factors in the table, what will the areas of these scaled copies be? Explain or show your reasoning. We can start with the information that they've provided us in the table. On the left hand column is the scale factor. On the right hand column is the area of units squared. So with a scale factor of 1, or the original unit, the area is 36 square units, or 36 units squared. With a scale factor of 2, we'll use 2 to the power of 2 times 36, which means 2 times 2 times 36, and 2 times 2 times 36 equals 144. So when the scale factor is 2, the area of this right triangle will be 144 square units. When the scale factor is 3, we'll use 3 squared times 36, which means 3 times 3 times 36. 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times 36 equals 324. So when the scale factor is 3, the area is 324 square units or 324 units squared. When the scale factor is 5, I'll use 5 squared, which is 5 to the power of 2, times 36. So 5 times 5 times 36. 5 times 5 is 25. 25 times 36 is 900. So when the scale factor is 5, the area of this right triangle is 900 square units, or 900 units squared. When the scale factor is 1 half, I'll use 1 half to the power of 2 times 36. 1 half times 1 half times 36. 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth, or half of a half is 1 fourth. And 1 fourth times 36, or 1 fourth of 36, equals 9. 
So when the scale factor is one half, the area of this right triangle is nine units squared or nine square units. When the scale factor is two thirds, I'll use two thirds to the power of two times 36 or two thirds square times 36. And two thirds times two thirds is four ninths. Four ninths times 36 equals 16. So when the scale factor is two thirds, the area of this right triangle is 16 square units or 16 units squared. Number three, Diego drew a scaled version of a polygon P and labeled it Q. If the area of polygon P is 72 square units, what scale factor did Diego use to go from P to Q? Explain your reasoning. On this grid, we can see polygon Q. This is what Diego drew. It's a scaled version of polygon P. In order to find out what scale factor Diego used to go from the original polygon P to his scaled version of polygon P, which he labeled Q, I need to find the area of polygon Q. And to do this, I'm going to decompose this polygon a bit to turn it into a shape that's easier for me to recognize. I chose to move this section over here to make one full square unit. Now it'll be a lot easier to count. It looks like we have a total of four and a half square units. So now we know that polygon Q has a total area of four and a half square units. I decided to organize this information in a chart. So we're still looking at number three. The original polygon P has an area of 72 units squared and a scale factor of one. Beneath it, we'll put polygon Q, Diego's version. We decomposed and rearranged Diego's version and discovered that it had an area of four and a half square units. You'll see I've written at the bottom that four and a half divided by 72 will provide us with the scale factor. When you use a calculator, you'll use 4.5 divided by 72. Number four, here is an unlabeled polygon along with its scaled copies, polygon A through D. For each copy, determine the scale factor. Explain how you know. The original polygon is the unlabeled polygon in the upper left corner. I'm going to start with its scaled copy, polygon A. I've drawn this line segment on the left in red, and I've drawn the corresponding line segment on the scaled copy A also in red. The total length for this line segment on the original copy is two units. The length for the scaled copy A is just one unit. Since one unit is half of two units, the scale factor is one half. Let's take a look at the scale copy B, and you'll notice that same line segment is one, two, three, four, four units long compared to the original two units. The length doubled. Four is twice the length of two. So scaled copy B was drawn with a scale factor of two. Let's take a look at scale copy C. This same corresponding length on scale copy C is three units long compared to the two units on the original polygon. This corresponding side length is one and a half times as long as the original side length, so its scale factor is one and a half. The corresponding side length on figure D, or scale copy D, is exactly the same length as the original unlabeled polygon, so it has a scale factor of one. Here's a closer look. Scale copy A has a scale factor of one half, and scale copy B has a scale factor of two, and scale copy C has a scale factor of one and one half, and scale copy D as a scale factor of one. Number five, solve each equation mentally. A, one seventh times x equals one. 
In this case, x equals 7, because 1 7th times 7 equals 1. b, x times 1 11th equals 1. In this case, x equals 11, because 11 times 1 11th equals 1. c, 1 divided by 1 5th equals x. In this case, x equals 5, because 1 divided by 1 fifth equals 5.